Hi, Malena. Good to see you. Hi. Hello. Great to be with you, albeit not personally in Seattle, but um, sorry about the technical hiccups here. Malena, thank you. we had a little warm up here, and because the plan was that Pekka provides a company example, you talk about uh, the Citrus work and achievement, you give that bigger picture. I comment on the both of that, so I think we can uh, continue with your presentation if, you're, if it's fine for you. That sounds excellent, and I'm told that my presentation will be shared on the screen where you are right now. So um, I'll go ahead and um, just a few words about Citra, the Finnish Innovation Fund. I'm representing Citra here. And if I could have the next slide, please. We're a think tank. We're operating independently, but under the Finnish parliament. We're also self-funded and we're working towards sustainability on a number of different fronts. Together, that's the whole point for the future of Finland and globally as well. Next slide, please. Now, all of us in the room know that we're facing a number of challenges at this moment. So starting with biodiversity loss, climate change, and the depletion of natural resources. Pekka has given good examples of how we become more resource efficient and circular economy. Next slide, please. It's all about how we use materials, raw materials, critical raw materials. And that will be of such importance to actually solving problems. 90% of biodiversity loss is related to the how we use resources, resource extraction. And 45% of climate emissions is also related to our production and consumption patterns. At the same time, global populations are growing and by 2060, we'll be using more double of um, natural resources compared to today. Next slide, please. So in this context, circular economy is a key solution. And it's about doing things in a much smarter way. And there are so many innovative, interesting companies in the US and the Nordics that you've heard about. It's about that kind of mindset of optimizing the system as a whole so that we can get to root causes and tackle those. Next slide, please. It's about value. It's about how we create value in the best possible way. And at the core, we need to get to smarter design. It's about digital solutions and really harnessing a uh, the, the new services economy. Next slide, please. So this is kind of this picture of where we're at and where we need to go. So if we're currently in the linear economy, the next step would be the recycling economy. And that's something that we're getting pretty good at. And it's quite a mainstream idea now. But the circular economy is a lot more than that. It's about thinking through the production of every product from cradle to cradle. Next slide, please. So it's about design. It's really about moving upstream and thinking differently because as much as 80% of every product's environmental impact is determined at the design phase. Next slide, please. So at Citra and in Finland, we are on this journey towards circularity and the circular economy. And I really want to emphasize that it's a journey. We're at the beginning, but we have started with um, a number of different paths, and I want to highlight three of them. The first one is about how to create a circular economy roadmap. Finland was the first country in the world to create our own roadmap, but now these are becoming more and more common and can, of course, happen at different levels as well. So it's not 
only at the country level. It's also, it can be at a municipal level, state level, et cetera. Businesses is a key to really moving to a circular economy and scaling it. And Citra has created a number of tools to help businesses define their own road towards circularity. And then of course we need global cooperation and Citra and Finland are hosting and have hosted the World Circular Economy Forum. Next slide, please. So on the circular economy roadmap, um, in Finland, what we recognized was that circularity can mean different things to different people. So we've had these inclusive stakeholder processes defining a vision for where we want to go and how to get there. This has also allowed us to think through impacts on different groups of the population, so really having a just transition. And we've created a tool or a guidebook for how to get towards a circular economy roadmap. A bit of an inspiring story, but also with concrete ideas for others to implement each and every one in their own way. And that is available on the Citra website. Next slide, please. So business is key and innovative, different ways of doing business is really important. And thinking about circular business models, there are a few different models that have developed from what current businesses look like. So one of them has to do with product life extension for more resource efficient, long lasting products. Then there are products as a service systems. Sharing platforms also allow for more efficient use of the resources that we have. Then there's the whole concept of renewability and moving from fossil based to biomass based usually products. And then there's resource efficiency and recycling. One thing that Citra has done is create a list of inspiring, interesting companies in the circular economy. And we quite often also do an update and it's a bit of a competition and you can find more information on that on our website also. Next slide, please. So at this point, I'll just give you a little taste of some of these companies and what they look like because they're very different <laughs> from small and nimble startups to more established companies that are just operating in a different way now. So an example of more of a small startup company is WIM, which is an app that provides mobility as a service. So in one click, you can find ways to get from one place to the other. It connects everything from city bikes to taxis to public transit to car sharing programs, and you actually don't need to own a car, especially, of course, in dense city centers. This can work well. And then we have another new company that's very tech intense, and that is the Infinite Fiber Company, which, with the textile sector looking the way it does today, just a lot of throughput a lot of waste, very little recycling actually happening. This company allows the use of, use of, of used textiles, but other uh, bio-based products as, as well and wastes to be turned into a really high quality new fiber. And they have ongoing uh, cooperation with a number of big textile companies or fashion companies that are very interested in, in this new kind of a raw material. And a third example is Kone Cranes, which is a producer of capital goods. And here resource efficiency has been part of the concept from the start because once you buy something as major as a crane, it has to last. And now they're are just a bunch of new sort of predictive maintenance solutions that can take that durability, repairability, 
upgrading capacity to the next level. Next slide, please. So in order to move this agenda and really move it at the global level, CITRA has created the World Circular Economy Forum. And of course, the Finnish government is very involved as well. It's a forum that first was organized in Helsinki in 2017. It has grown. It's been on three continents already. It's a forum for companies, for governments, for NGOs, for academia, and also very much a forum that gathers UN organizations and other international um, organizations to share best practices and be inspired. Next slide, please. So the next iteration of the World Circular Economy Forum will be held in Kigali, Rwanda later this year. And after that, we move back to Helsinki again in 2023. So I would like to welcome all of you to Helsinki then. And thank you so much. I'll pass back to Okko Pekka and Pekka in the room there with you in Seattle. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Malena. Uh, I think Pekka has just left the building, but uh, uh, I will try to comment your very thorough presentation. Thank you so much. I would like to start by saying that uh, we, we saw some company examples uh, also in your presentation. And of course, what we need uh, to have is uh, concrete examples of frontrunner companies in order, in order to understand in concrete terms what does it take to have a circle economy business. And I also take from your presentation that, uh, that uh, circle economy does not mean in any way of abandoning the paradigm of, of economic growth. It, it, uh, what it uh, does uh, necessitate is that we need to have a different kind of approach and thinking. Harnessing the market economy in a new way and utilizing data economy, uh, but also pl platform and sharing economy, and of course, thinking about the certification of the economy and supporting that. These are also vehicles and, and uh, catalysators for circle economy. So it's a little bit, uh, I understand, but uh, it sounds a little bit academic, the discussion. But I really liked earlier today when we had the uh, panel about the sustainable aviation fuels, uh, it was mentioned uh, the problematics of, of the companies and, and those who produce the fuel. It, it concretizes what is needed in order to take the next step uh, uh, towards circular economy. And exactly as you said, that we are at this stage maybe at least uh, relatively uh, satisfactory doing recycling but it, it does not mean that we are there as regards to uh, uh, circular economy. And um, then the question is, uh, what, what are the building blocks that need to be in place for us uh, to be honestly uh, of the opinion that we are proceeding and the tra transition is happening? And I would say that uh, we, it, uh, whole of government approach, of course, it, it, it uh, goes without saying we need that, but that's not enough. We need to have whole of society approach as well. And when it comes to the government role, we need to have, uh, we need to have a bold, ambitious policy guidance that needs to be coherent because circular economy is having, happening in, in several sectors of life and policy, politics. And um, we of course need to have enabling, and again, coming back to the panel earlier today, also mandatory, uh, mandatory regulation. That means we need to have stick and carrot, and yes, we need to have incentives. Otherwise, the transition does not happen. And uh, we need new kind of uh, thinking uh, as regards to markets, ecosystems, and of course, we need new kind of business, business models and also innovation models. Uh, today, the president of Iceland talked about uh, innovation examples and he also underlined uh, the inclusion and the, the, uh, 
equal opportunities, which was also mentioned by you, Robert, earlier. And I think this is a crucial factor uh, if you think that, uh, if you consider that the voters and, and their citizens and consumers are taking their transition in, in uh, they're taking it seriously and they're actively contributing to the transition. So it means that we need to have not only public-private partnerships, but also having the people there as well, getting their uh, understanding and support. And uh, that, uh, of course, uh, needs a lot of uh, political capital and, and using that because we know how fragile the trust in our societies nowadays is. So I think it's, uh, the credibility factor is extremely important. You need to show to the consumers what's in, what's in there for, uh, for their benefit and how they can actually contribute and be responsible. And at the same time, you need to provide for the companies possibilities, but also mandatory regulation uh, to support the transition. And my final point is, is that you need the uh, international cooperation. As you mentioned, Malena, uh, international cooperation and there also international rules, uh, not only in trade, but also in other economic, uh, economic uh, areas. Uh, four hours to uh, conclude this session, uh, rethink, reduce, uh, reuse, and also, of course, recycle. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so very much.